Welcome, welcome. Well, it's Sunday the 26th, starting in about eight minutes. You want to come and join me in the room right there? While I enjoy some Miranda Curtis. Yeah, there's a miracle, a river of miracles flowing. We're going, I'm going to be starting in about eight minutes. About eight minutes. Those of you who've got the invite already, feel free to come join me right here in the room. Those of you who want to join us on Facebook or even join in the room, let me know. And I can send the detail over to you to join me right here in the room tonight because we're dealing with. I just feel like I'm going to get to anything. <laughs> Likewise. Yeah, maybe with some um, something quite interesting tonight. I think it is. Let me not speak for everyone. I'm giving God honor, I'm giving glory, and we're giving him praise for all that he has done, all that he is doing, all that he will continue to do. He's God all by himself, and we worship him as well. Starting in about seven minutes. Feel free to come and join me right here. Hallelujah. I love this song. There's a river of miracles. Yeah. We're giving God praise for all that He has done. Six minutes time, I'm going to be kicking off. And people are coming into the room now. He's going to give God thanks, giving him honor, giving him glory, giving him praise. We're already on Facebook, so we don't want to be seen on Facebook. Turn your cameras on. We're already on Facebook. <laughs> already on, just waiting. I'm trying to get people to come on into the room. We're going to be dealing with Jonah tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Feel free to join me on Facebook if you don't know the phone. If you know the phone or if you want the phone. Um, just send me a message. I want to send that over to you. I don't want to put it out on Facebook open. Oh. I can hear you. I don't want to put it out on Facebook open. We're starting in four minutes. Come and join me here in the room. There's a blessing in store. There's a blessing in store. They're sending messages out. I don't mean to be rude. I'm looking down. Um. Giving God praise. Let me 
Hallelujah. The water is troubled. The water is troubled. The water is troubled. I've been in a place of worship. Uh, I've learned. I've learned a very valuable lesson. When life starts to squeeze you from every angle, look up. Turn your worship up. Turn your praise up. Set, channel it all up. Package them feelings and channel them up. <laughs> when you don't know, uh, one, one writer says, when my heart is overwhelmed, just, just lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And so I've been in a place of worship today. Because that's all right. That's all right. Because God is, oh, he's awesome. Amen. Three minutes. We'll be kicking off in three minutes. And i sorry. I just have this song already. <laughs> if you didn't hear what I said it before, I'll say it again. I absolutely love this song. I mean, I love everything that Miranda Purchase kind of touches. Um, have had the privilege of seeing her in concert. Well, concert in worship. Well, worship. She's a worship, she's a psalmist, she's a worship leader. Um, and it was absolutely phenomenal. And so um, I loved her before that. And I still love, she knows how to touch heaven. And so I um, absolutely love her song. But I was going through my playlist and this one came on and I just press repeat. So it's just on constant repeat for now. It might be like that for a few days, hey, but there's a rhythm. As people are coming in the room, we're starting in two minutes. There's a river. And as people come in the room, let me let you know. We are already on Facebook trying to just get uh, more people to join us tonight to be a part of what God is going to be doing and saying tonight. We want others to be blessed, not just us. And so if you've come on, and you don't want to, my, my brethren, my best brethren don't like to be on, on Facebook most of the time. So I gotta let them know so they can turn their cameras off. I have no problems with that. If I could talk to you, turning mine off too, I would. <laughs> I don't think it was easy. But come and join me in the room. Join me in the room. We're starting in one minute. And giving God thanks for all that he is doing. He's such an awesome God. He's worthy of glory, worthy of honor, and worthy of praise. And we're starting in one minute. I can see that I am on Facebook. I'm checking for people to come and join me. We're just having a chat tonight. I'm just going to talk. I might start to be a bit crazy, but we're just going to talk. Starting in just a few seconds. I'm going to turn my music down and then I'm going to start. We're starting now. Yes, we're not, we're not going to go anymore with that. So as we begin, we just make sure everything is starting. Yes giving God thanks for all that he is doing. He is God all by himself. We're about to begin. Amen. Let's try that again. It's playing, but there's no sound, so bear with me. Let me just do something. There we go.
We worship you, O God. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining me right here in the uh, room on Zoom for King's Chapel's Sunday evening. Uh, I'm going to call it worship session, but it's not really a worship, it's more a teaching session. I'm just going to hand over, uh, bear with me while I hand over the um, some the rights to let people in the room because I'm looking to the side of my computer with it with zoom that it's running from is actually to my left to your right so i'm going to hand over to um, someone to co-host for me so that she can let people in the room from here on in welcome thank you so much for joining us right here at king's chapel i was saying at king's chapel it's become like you know our place now on zoom uh, but good news hopefully um all being well God allows we'll be back in our building soon. So watch this space. We give him thanks for all that he has done, for all that he is doing, and for all that he will manifest in our lives. Because we know, as I said this morning, everything that God is going to do in our vernacular, he's already done. We're just um, going through, we're moving through time, traveling through Cronus time until we meet up with the blessings and the things, the blessings of God and the things that he has done. So I want to, we want to, I want to say welcome again. Thank you for joining us. For those of you who might have missed our service this morning and wondering if we didn't have a service, we did have a service. We just had a teaching session where um, people were able to ask questions and answer them. And I believed it would have been more um, uh, productive if we weren't on social media. And so our service this morning was not on social media, but we most certainly did have a meeting and we enjoyed it by, um, by God's grace. We give God thanks for that. So tonight, I just want to begin, first of all, with prayer. Then we're going to, going to greeting. We're going to just have an atmosphere of worship and I won't be with you long at all. I want to tell you some things I've learned about Jonah. 
<laughs> oh God, let's pray. Father, we honor you, we praise and we adore you. We thank you for this, another time that you've allowed us to come together. It's another opportunity that we have, that we can come into your course, that we can dissect your words, that we can sit at your table, that we can hear from you, that we can be um, ignited by your presence and be filled with your spirit. Another time, God, that you can speak into the recesses of our soul and cause us to hear words, hallelujah, that will cause us to run on, hallelujah, that will give us the strength, the fortitude, God. God, that will um, solidify us in you even more than we are, that will cause our faith to rise to new dimension, that will cause, hallelujah, our trust in you to move to another level, that God will raise us as ever higher in you tonight as we come before you. We pray, dear God, that everything you're going to say to us, that we will receive and apply them to our lives. Be with us. Oh God, I pray right now that the impact of you, hallelujah, will go across social media, will go across to everyone who watches, whether live or otherwise this service, be with us. We're careful to give you all the honor. We're careful to give you all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Greetings again for those of you who have just joined me, just to let you know we are already on Facebook. So we're going out live on Facebook tonight. We weren't out this morning on Facebook, but we're out tonight. It's just a short teaching. I just want to share with you some things that I've learned. And I wasn't even studying Jonah. I was just reading Jonah. I haven't even gotten to studying him yet. I was just reading him and just reading the book. As they're reading him because the book bears his name. I was just reading the book and just chuckled um, to myself with some of the things that I was learning. I started to jot them down and I thought, you know what? I'm going to teach on that tonight. Just some things that I have learned. I don't know. You might have learned some stuff as well. It might be the same. It might be different from, from what I've learned. But we're just going to share that tonight. But before we go into that, there's a song that I learned way back as a young uh, Christian, probably. I can't remember where in the in my years I was. Um, a song that was written by a group that I know back then. I uh, don't know if they're still singing. I think they are. I'm not sure. They're, they hailed from Pentecostal Tabernacle. I think they wrote the song called I Long For You. I'm not sure if I'm getting it all wrong, but if they didn't, then forgive me. But it says, I long for you. I long for you as a watchman for the dawn or the death to hear a song. I long for you. I long for you as the deer Hands for water, my desire for you grows stronger. I long for you. Let me say, as the deep hands have for the water, so my soul. Longs after thee. Worship with me. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee as a dear. As the deer panted for the water, so my soul longs after thee. You alone are my heart's desire. Thee. 
is one of the most beautiful things that we have as mankind to be able to worship God in spirit and in truth. I have never, I've never taken drugs. I've never been drunk. Uh, there's some things I've never partaken of, but I can guarantee you that even though I haven't partaken of them, those who have and have shared their experiences, I can say from what they have told me, there is nothing that compares to being in the presence of God, to be in his atmospheric presence and to just have the Shekinah of God just on you and in you and you've just been in his presence, just being anywhere close to him. It's, it sets the soul alight. It sets a flame in the spirit that is unquenchable, almost an, an um, uh, uh, insatiable appetite for just more. You know, you eat something and you, you go, mm, that's really nice. And you finish eating it, but it creates a desire on the palate that it, you just want more. That's how God is to our spirit. It's an insatiable appetite that we just, we just want more of God and more of him. And the more of him we get and the closer we get to him is the more of him we want and the closer we want to get. Because no matter how much of God you learn and no matter how much of God you experience, it always leaves you wanting more. And you realize I haven't learned anything yet. I, I don't know him as much as I should. I don't know him as much as I could. Oh my gosh, I just want more. And so there's a song by William Murphy. I'm not going to sing it. I don't know it. I only heard it. Where he said, we just, we just want you. We just, we just want you because there's nothing that compares to it. Absolutely nothing. But tonight I greet you again in the mighty wonderful name of Jesus Christ. He is our God, he's our savior and our soon coming king. And we want to meet him as savior and not as judge. And so we have committed to living our lives to please him. He doesn't, uh, people say, oh, it's legalistic and we don't have to do anything for salvation. We are not doing anything for salvation. Salvation is full and free. We've received of it, but it, we have come to the realization that there's nothing we could do to pay or repay God for what he has done for us. But we have committed our lives to living according to his word. That means we give up on their cer certain things um, that tickles the flesh and, and, um, uh, and, and uh, tickles the, 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 the senses, the pleasures. That's what I'm looking for. But we have found something that's so much more. And so living for God is something that we do without it's not under duress we do it willingly because living for him there's as i said there's nothing compared to being in the presence of the lord absolutely nothing i don't look i don't care what it is you have tried i guarantee you you haven't tasted anything yet until you've been filled with the holy ghost and you've been in the presence of the god of the lord most high amen um so let, let me stop because i tell you i can stay here just talking about god all night but i want to greet all the, all those of you who've um, those who are watching on Facebook and those who are in the room tonight. As I said, I'm just going to be speaking a little bit about Jonah, what I've learned in my reading. I wasn't studying, I was just reading Jonah. Um, there's a big difference between reading and studying on someone and so or something. And so I want to talk tonight, and my, to my topic is avoid the whale. <laughs> uh, avoid the whale. I just avoid the whale. We can avoid the whale. Jonah is one of the books named after the prophet of the same name housed in the Old Testament, uh, the book of Jonah, Jonah, which specifically details the, st the call, the story of the call, um, uh, Jonah's call to go to Nineveh, not, not his call into ministry, his call to go into Nineveh. I, I don't believe that the book of Jonah details every instance of call that Jonah had from God, nor does it give all the details of everything that took place in Jonah's ministry and walk with God. It deals specifically with the incident involving Jonah's stubbornness, uh, Jonah's act of defiance, and ultimate, oh, his disobedience and ultimate submission. Please note, when God is involved, <laughs> when God is involved and you are being called by God, when God has a purpose on your life, mm -hmm, and he does, you can rebel, you can defy all you want, but sooner or later, you are going to have to submit to God. <laughs> Ask Jonah, yeah? There's a plethora of lessons to be learned from Jonah's experience in this story. One would need uh, more than a week to, to, to at least, at least to exhaustively deal with each 
Um, but but we, we don't have a week tonight. We got like an hour plus. So please allow me to skirt over just a just a few of the lessons I learned while I was reading the story of Jonah. The lessons I learned from Jonah are one, you gotta know who you're with. <laughs> know who you and I'm laughing because God, can I can I say again? God is so good. He's so good. You've got to know who you're with, whether you're in business, whether it's friendship, whether it's relationship or otherwise, you must know who you are with. Before you commit to connecting with someone, before you commit to going all in, get to know what they are about. The, the, okay, so what am I talking about? If you go to the book of Jonah and let's read from verse one, just chapter one. I wouldn't have time to go through all the chapters. I'm gonna skirt over chapter one and deal a bit with chapter two. He says, now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai saying, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city and cry against it for their wickedness has come up before me. But, <laughs> there's a but, and there's not a but that came from God. There's a but from Jonah. We're like the but God or but Jesus, the but other people, uh, sometimes off. It says, but Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. What's wrong with that story? What, what are you going to Tarshish for? The, the instruction was to arise and go to Nineveh. Know who you are. If you're walking with someone or about to commit with someone, commit um, into friendship, relationship, business with someone who is walking in disobedience, you're going to have some problems because if they're running from God, it's going to affect you. Oh, somebody tell me something. These marinas, okay, um, the, let me go back and read it from verse, verse, Verse three alone, it says, but Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof, went down into it. These guys didn't check. The marinas welcomed a stranger onto their ship and had no idea the trouble they were going to be inviting onto their ship. They had no idea what they were in for. He paid the fare, he went down into it, the ship that is, and go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Now, that's lesson number one. You got to know who you're with. If you're running with someone who is running from God, uh, you might find you're too close to trouble. If you're running with someone or connected to someone who is not in their destined walk with God, they're not in their purpose, it may weigh on you a bit. Let, let's see what happened to these guys. So lesson number two, you cannot run from God. God will chase you down wherever you go. God will interrupt your schedule just to get his schedule on track. Uh, ver let's look at verse four. But the Lord sent, here it goes, but the Lord, but the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea and there was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the ship was like to be broken. Can you imagine? They're not in a boat, they're in a ship, so it's big. And the, the waves and the winds are so rough that the ship feels as though it's about to be broken up. You know it was some heavy winds. And here is Jonah in this ship. These marinas welcomed, as I said before, a stranger onto their ship and had no idea this brother was out of alignment with God. Some storms in your life are sent to get you back on course. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Some storms in your life are there to get you back onto the destined path that God has carved out for you. Not every trial is from the devil. Hello. God is steering you back on course, Jonah. Mm -hmm. You cannot run from God. Take it from me. <laughs> I tried. Didn't work. Can't run from God. Lesson number three, who you connect with could cost you your stuff. <laughs> who you connect with, this connects to number, lesson number one, know who you're with, who you connect with could cost you your stuff. Case in point, before I look at Jonah, let's look at two other cases. Joshua, Joshua and the children of Israel are going through the land. They've um, come through, they've, um, uh, they were victorious over Jericho, eventually victorious over AI, and they're wiping out and they're taking the land. And here comes this group of guys all dressed up in old clothes, dried up bread, dried up bottle. And they came 
and they wanted to cut a contract, a covenant with Joshua. Incidentally, if you read the story, this was one of those times when Joshua failed to question or to go before the Lord to ask, should he do this? He got up and he cut a covenant with these guys that he wouldn't, um, you know, whatever the covenant was. And unknown to him, these guys, they, they told him that they were from a far land. Unknown to him, they were from around the corner. <laughs> they were just afraid because they'd heard of Joshua and the Israelites. They'd heard about them and how God fought for them. They'd heard about them and didn't want to be driven off their land. They'd heard about them and didn't want them to take their stuff. And so they went and they lied to Joshua, but Joshua didn't know. And Joshua went into a covenant with them. When he found out and went to God, God said, no, 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 hello. You got to hold to the contract, to the deeds, to the covenant that you cut with them. He said, God is a covenant keeping God. So he, Joshua, they couldn't drive them off the land to the point where later on when King Saul came about and tried to, and was killing them off, God then turned around and punished the people in David's time. Oh, go read about it. God's a covenant keeping God. Be careful who you connect with. It could cost you your stuff. Next one, David. David is running from King Saul. David's running from King Saul, case in point two. Running from King Saul and hearing, on hearing or knowing, realizing King Saul is trying to kill him, he ran and ran and ran and he got to the priest or he got to Nob. And when he got there, he was, you know, he said, the priests were like, oh, why are you by yourself? They said, oh, he said, oh, I've got a, a you know, a, a business for the king. And, and they knew he was the king's armor bearer. And so they didn't think much of it. And he asked for food. They gave him bread. He asked for a sword. They said there was none here, only Goliath's sword. They gave it to him. And there was a little traitor there who ran back and told Saul that the, the knob, the priest in Nob helped David. Saul killed off 85 priests. And their families, wives, children, everybody, because David showed up. Careful, who you connect with could cost you your stuff. What do I mean by these? These marinas, again, and welcome a stranger in. Come on in, we've got room for everybody. You paid the fare, you look a decent person. Hey, we can, we can travel with you. But because of Jonah, God sent a wind and a basically a storm. And they couldn't, they didn't know what to do. Now they're saying that in verse five, it says, then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God and cast for their wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. So all the stuff they gathered, all the stuff that they had purchased, all the stuff that they had acquired, everything they had, all their goods were now overboard because Jonah showed up. <laughs> Be careful who you connect with. It could cost you your stuff. Lesson number four. Guilty people can sometimes behave as if they don't have a clue <laughs> why there's a storm raging all around. If you read verse five, the rest of verse five, it says, but Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and he laid and was fast asleep. There's a wind, a storm raging outside. Everybody's throwing their stuff away. They're panicking. They're afraid. Try and picture it if you can. And here is Jonah. <laughs> the cause. He's, a, he's lying in the belly of the ship, fast asleep. Brother man is sleeping like he ain't got no problems. He's sleeping like ain't no trouble in the world about him. He's sleeping like, hello, he's got it all together. The brother man is fast asleep, guilty people. When they started to pray and to, to, you'll see later on, they started to cast love. Jonah was there as well. At no point did Jonah said, oh, by the way, let's just, okay, let me tell you what's going on. It wasn't until the lot fell on Jonah that Jonah spoke up. He was sat back like, let me see which one of you jokers have caused this. <laughs> Lord, help me, Jesus. I'm laughing. Bear with me. This is serious. Lesson number five. Ask the right questions and ask them early. If you ask them when you are out in the middle of the sea, you're too far into the situation. Finding out then that he was running from God is a bit too late. It's too late. If, 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 if it, it wasn't until trouble came that the marinas started to ask the right questions. 
Let's read it. Verse eight, it says, then said they unto him, tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is come upon us? What is thine occupation? This after they cast lots, the Lord Philip and Jonah, and they were like, uh, what did you do? This is when they're gonna ask, what is thine occupation? I'm a prophet of God. And whence, from when, where, from whence are you coming? Oh, um, well, I was supposed to build a ship to Nineveh because God sent me there to warn the people. But I didn't want to go to Nineveh. And so I decided to call a ship going to talk. Hello. This was information that was pertinent to the journey before we head off. We kind of needed to know that. But you see, they didn't ask the right questions. And by the time they were asking them, they were already in the middle of a storm. Glory. Whence from whence come it thou? And what is thy country? And of what people art thou? I'm a, he said, I am an Hebrew and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. Right there, the marinas know. No matter how much we pray to our idols or gods, they weren't going to do anything because this guy's God controls the sea. So if your God controls the sea, what's going on? Then were the men exceedingly afraid, it says in verse 10, and said unto him, why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because now he had told them. He told them now. They had not asked before. Then said they unto him, what shall we do unto thee? That the sea may be calm unto us, for the sea wrought and was tempestuous. We got to know who we're connected with. We've got to know, let me go back up before I go any further. Um, no, you cannot run from God. Run with people who you know are running in the same. How can two walk except they agree? Hmm? Two cannot walk except they agree. I got to be walking in the will of God ordained for my life. And you've got to be walking in the will of God ordained for your life for us to connect. Otherwise, either I'm going to cost you some stuff or you're going to cost me some stuff. <laughs> Guilty people can sometimes behave as they don't know. Oh, no, what's going on? Really? They become airheads. Hmm? Ask the right questions and ask them early. Lesson number six. Even with good intentions, you cannot fight against God. Even with good intentions. The marinas had good intentions. When, when Jonah said, cast me overboard, they were thinking, huh? What? Sorry, you just told us that your God controls the sea. And we should cast you over the... No, no, there's, there's got to be another way. Let's, let's try and roll this thing. And so the Bible says they were trying to roll to get off the trouble, they were trying to roll. It says, e, the, 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 let me read it from verse, uh, verse, 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 um, verse. Let's read from verse 12. It says, and he said unto them, take me up and cast me forth into the sea. So shall the sea be calm unto you for, I know that for my sake, this great tempest is upon you. Verse 30, nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to land. They were, they were trying, like, we're not gonna cast you overboard. Are you crazy? You just told us your God controls the sea. We're not hot. Your God's gonna kill us if we do that. They, so they were trying really hard with good intentions to save Jonah's life. They were trying at, at the risk of their own, but they could not, the Bible says, for the sea wrought and was tempestuous against them. What they did know is God had Jonah's ride ready. Uh, his ride was ready. Wherefore they cried, verse 14, unto the Lord and said, we beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life and lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly. Then, and they offered sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. So even with good intentions, the marinas had good intentions. They were trying to escape the boisterous winds, but there was no escaping. They had to get Jonah out the boat, get Jonah out the ship. He is going in the wrong direction. Sometimes you got to say to people at the risk of offending you, you got to turn around and go do what God told you to do. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me tell you, I want some friends that know how to offend me so I can get on the right track with God. You got to say to people, listen, I love you, but you are out of alignment with God. I, I, I know you want us to, to sign that business contract, but not until both of us are in alignment with God, because it could cost you everything. Hallelujah. 
his transportation, God had it pulled up and waiting alongside. Let's see what happened. Jonah, here's Jonah now. He's now in the, been cast overboard, swallowed up by a whale, which he could have avoided, but hey. Jonah is in the belly of the whale, and the way it reads, verse 17, verse 17 of chapter 1 says, let me just read it, because let me show you Jonah's mindset. So here he is in the well of the whale, and it says, now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, full stop. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Read verse one. Then Jonah prayed. Verse one of chapter two. Um, you mean you were vexed down there? Hold up a second. You're in the belly of the whale. But the way the story reads, it seems as though Jonah was vexed. He was being defiant even more. He waited three days and three nights before he cried out to God. He just sat stubborn. Like, I'm not going to Nineveh. I'm not, I'm not going to Nineveh. I don't care what you do. I'm not going to. Hello. <laughs> I'm not. But, but, but um, you don't want to play the long game with God. You know why? You got a limited amount of time. He's got eternity. You don't want to play the long game with God. Finally, after three days, three nights, Jonah cried out unto the Lord. Verse one of chapter two. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, um, his God out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of my affliction. Sorry, Jonah, is that why you're crying? Is that really why you're crying? You start with the affliction first, Jonah. You, you're really starting there. Anyway, <laughs> my affliction unto the Lord and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou, and thou heardest my voice, for thou hast cast me into the deep. Really? Really, Jonah? I just cast you into the deep for no reason, <laughs> For no reason? Hello? And in the midst of the seas, and the floods come past me about, all thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. Really, Jonah? That's where you want to start with this. The waters come past me about even to the soul. The depth closed me round. He's talking all about what's happened to him. The weeds were wrapped around, wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottom of the mountains, the earth. I guess that's when he was in the belly of the whale and the whale would swim down. Yes, the earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. They that, they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice unto thee with a voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that, that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish and he vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. What I find amazing with chapter two is this. Jonah began his prayer with the fact that he was afflicted. But he failed to highlight his part in the reason for his affliction. You notice that? <laughs> One of the first things I noticed, like, really, Jonah? You, you, you start with the affliction, not with the disobedience or the defiance? No, no. You, Lord, because I was defiant, Lord, and I was disobedient, I, you afflicted me. No, you didn't want to start there. No, no, no. Start with the affliction. He failed to highlight his part. Isn't that like us when we're called out? It's not like us. We, we, we will highlight the consequences with which we are faced, but we rarely mention our part or what we did, the actions we partook in to lead to the resulting consequences with which we are faced. Jonah talked about the death which closed around him. He talked about how he went down to the bottom of the mountains, but he negated to mention how he tried to run from the purpose of God. He negated how to, men um, um, to mention how he tried to defy and be stubborn. You notice it's not mentioned in the prayer, it's not there at all. But all of this could have been avoided had obedience been the order of the day on Jonah's part. Then there would have been no need for God to send a, te a tempestuous wind. There would have been no need for the marinas to lose their stuff. There would have been no need for God to send a whale to wait for Jonah, um, you know, who God knew would have been thrown, cast overboard. Uh, there would have been no delay in getting to Nineveh because of being trapped in the belly of the whale. Hello, Jonah. You upset the whole ethos because of your disobedience and defiance. Mm, Jonah, 
Just avoid the whale altogether, why don't you? Why not just do as God has commanded you to do? Hmm? Sometimes in our lives, we face crisis and tumults, and we row as hard as we can in an effort or an attempt to get out of troubled waters. But could it be that somewhere along the line, we negated something that God told us to do? Could it be that somewhere along the line, we've gone off course, we've gone off path, Oh, and then it causes a domino effect of catastrophe in our wake because we are out of alignment with God, out of balance with his will, and then everyone around us is affected. Jonah, why are you heading to Tarshish, Jonah? Hello, didn't God send you to Nineveh? Why are you heading in a direction God, that God didn't send you? Jonah, why are you standing in a place of disobedience? Jonah, hello. What will God have to do to get you back on course? Mm -hmm. Why don't you cry out to God in the belly of that whale that you are in and let God direct the whale to vomit you back into your purpose? Why sit there for three days in defiance? He didn't have to be there for three days. He didn't have to be there for that. I just saw that today. I was like, jo yesterday. I was like, Jonah, seriously? I loved it. As I said, I just wanted to share some of the things that I learned today, um, I learned when I was reading Jonah. Why sit ye in the valley of decision? Step into the purpose of God. It is God's will that none perish. I ask you want to know what is the purpose of God? It is God's will that none perish, but that all come to repentance. It is God's will that you repent of your sins and be baptized in his powerful, sin-remitting, saving name of Jesus. It is God's will that you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the initial evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God give it the utterance. It is God's will that you live a life pleasing unto him and him alone. And as, as I started out, let me repeat, I said it earlier, we do not... We, it, People say, oh, you know, you got to do this. You can't do that. You, and they look on the, all the things you cannot do in Christendom. Um, and they say, oh, it's legalistic. And they, they, they call it all sorts. Let me, just, let me just say, nobody's forcing you to serve God. But when you come to God and you experience the heavenly gift and you've tasted of this, listen, you will willingly want to serve him too. But until you have come into an encounter with God, you won't get it. You won't get it. I was speaking to my sister, one of my sisters, and um, I won't give her a name. She's in the army and she has to move from one place that they, they were settled to somewhere else. And I was saying to her, are you all right with it? How are you with it? She said, nothing to be all right. She said, I don't have a feeling about it. I said, what do you mean? She said, there's no feeling about it. I've got to do it. And then it, it suddenly hit me. Of course, she's a soldier. Right? They've been trained and conditioned very differently. I said to her, can you come and teach your people in the church how, what mindset to have? And she laughed because we don't get it yet. When we step into the kingdom of God, we are soldiers in the army of the Lord. When you watch um, how soldiers behave, when they get a command, there is no, why should I do this? I don't want to do that. Isn't there a better way? Can't we do it? Um, Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. wrong mindset wrong mindset the mindset of a soldier is yes sir do you, do you see that do so yes sir da -da -da. yes sir because they recognize that they are they operate by instruction and they're obedient to the instruction even to death if they're deployed to go into battle they go do you think they don't feel like you know hesitant they probably do but they are trained to obey now in the church we're not training you to obey we expect you to obey from just experiencing god now when you have an experience god, i'll tell you i'll be the first to tell you it doesn't come so naturally even after you experience god you know there's still a bit of kicking and screaming and wailing and pushing and digging your heels in the lord i don't really want to do it this way god isn't there another way that you can do it oh, oh yeah we do we do go through that and we, like Jonah, have to come through all the stages of disobedience, the defiance, the stubbornness, till we get to submission. But you know, it would be easy if we avoided all of those and just jumped to submission. Our Christian life would be so much easier. It would be so much easier if we get to the point where we say, you know what, God, we don't just sing, Lord, whatever you're doing in the season, don't do it without because when you're saying that it means he's going to give you instruction and the instruction is going to give you you're expecting it to be something that's going to put you on stage you're expecting it to be something that's going to have your name in lights but it doesn't always 
It doesn't always. I've been reading through the prophets, and I mean, some of the things that God told Ezekiel to do. I was, I was looking up like, God, oh, come on. That's not, seriously, you want, how can he do that? But Ezekiel, you know, he was called into it. There are certain things that when we, when we come into God, when, when I say come into God, I mean come into the kingdom of God and you get instruction to do. Some people fight against it. They'll push, they'll pull there. But when you get an instruction from God, let me be the first to tell you, he will give it to you, uh, the instruction or, you know, whatever he ask you to do. And he'll probably allow you to get away with disobeying him a few times. After a while, <laughs> like Jonah, he's going to send a whale. He's going to send a whale. He's going to send a storm. You're going to have to be cast overboard and the whale is going to take you back into your destiny. And I cannot believe that it was pleasant sitting in the belly of that whale. You think a whale didn't eat for three days? I'm sure he it. Can you imagine all the things that Jonah was having coming down on him? Mm. I'm a little bit squeamish, so I can't get into that. But it is God's will that you live a life pleasing unto him, not one that you're forced into, not one that is wrapped in um, some mystical hidden agenda. No, it's in the word of God. At King's Chapel, we believe in reading the word. This is why I say to the saints to read the word. Every um, January, we start again at the first, um, the, the book of Genesis from chapter one all the way through. And by this time of the year, we're in the, going into the end of the Old Testament, going into the New, New, New Testament to finish up by October. We believe in, I believe in the saints reading the word of God because when they read the word of God, they become familiar with the stories. When they read the word of God, they, be get to, they begin to know the word of God to the point where they can hold me accountable if I say something that's not according to the word of God, because this is not about me. And this is not about us as pastors. The saints need to know the word of God and we can teach you all we want, but unless you're reading and taking it in for yourself, you'll never know it. And you need, every saint need to be reading the Bible. Get familiar with the stories, get familiar with the word, read it over and over and over to become familiar with the word. And when you're doing that, no one can tell you something that isn't there. Because as soon as they say something that isn't there, you go, well, um, I read that story, but that's not how it went. Even if you can't quote it like Johnny James, the walking Bible hello, you'll at least know what the word says. So it is God's will that you live a life pleasing unto him and him alone. It is his will that you are saved. Why don't you come? Why don't you indicate your desire to avoid the whale? <laughs> avoid the whale. Give your heart to the Lord. Send us an email. Connect with us via our contacts page on our website. Our website is www.kingschapelashford.uk or email is admin at kingschapelashford.uk. We will get back to you, I guarantee you, and we will lead you to where you need to be according to the call of God upon your life. God bless you tonight. As I said, we, I wasn't going to be here long at all, but I just wanted to share with you some of the things I learned about Jonah in reading, and that's just skirting over some of the stuff. I, did, I wouldn't have time to go through all of it, but I just want to say to you tonight, if God has given you an instruction avoid the whale. Just do what God has said, because I guarantee you his will will be done. His word will never fall to the ground void. It must accomplish in the thing to which he had sent it. And whether it's you or somebody else, it's going to be done. But the cost of defiant stubbornness and disobedience could land you in the belly of a whale. Avoid the whale. God bless you this evening. Tonight, um, for those of you who are here with me online, thank you again. For those who are watching um, on Facebook, for those who are in the room, God bless you. And we're going to say good night and thank you so much for joining us. Father God, as we're about to close, we pray that, dear God, you cause us to learn how to be obedient to your word. Help us to be obedient to your will. Help us to be obedient to your purpose. Help us to know what your purpose is and to be obedient to it. I pray, dear God, you cause us this week as we go through our life, that every time you speak to us, help us, dear God, to be obedient. So we'll avoid the catastrophe, that we'll avoid the crisis, that we'll avoid the delays, that we'll avoid, dear God, the, the things that will cause us to go off course because we didn't listen to what you said. Oh God, I pray that you give us a spirit of application and a spirit of obedience for you in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you tonight. Thank you again for staying with me. Thank you for joining and avoid the whale. God bless you.